It's the Don't Make It Weird Podcast. With your hosts, Daniel and Dina Soros. Hello, hello. We are back. And this is going to be a very special issue of the Don't Make It Weird Podcast. I am your, one of your hosts, Daniel Quigley, and I am joined, as always, by the jubilant juxtaposition of Jinx and Jester, the Dina Corn herself, Dina Soros. Yeah. I didn't hit anything this time. Sliding in beautifully. Dina, Dina, we're going back to back guests this week. How pumped up are you? I know. It's crazy. I didn't think we would ever do that. Oh my gosh! And listen, it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be tough to beat because last last week we had Thomas Anthony Lay on the show, and Dina, yes or no, did you fall in love a little bit? I did a little bit fall in love. It was the British wizard wizardry wizardry. Saying <laughs> British and wizard back to back is hard. Yeah, British I mean, wizardry. imagine what Harry Potter has to go through. It's unbelievable. We yeah. had Ta- Thomas oh, Anthony Lay on our show, the author of The Age of Reckoning, Volumes 1 and 2, which is now available on Amazon. You can find him on Twitch at... Oh, God. Nas- <laughs> Nasus? Nasus. 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 God, he's going to hate me. And also, thank you for everyone that reached out, that tr- that donated to the Pancreatic Cancer UK charity. This was amazing. What a great episode. But we're about to do one better. Our guest this week is the author and co-founder and editor-in-chief at Lost Boys Press. Her latest novella, The Garden of the Golden Children, is available now on Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, and wherever else you can find books. Ashley Hutchison, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Oh, my gosh. We are so pumped up to have you on. How are we feeling? Are you excited? Nerves tingling? All of it. Every bit of it. <laughs> and the person and, and with us, we have one last member of the team. The only adult in the room, the mature one, the one that keeps me on track. The beautiful producer Sean. How are you, buddy? Doing okay. <laughs> I'm gonna hold a poll tonight and uh, ask the community how many times. Daniel fucked up in the first two minutes of the episode. Uh, they, they, we'll they, know. they know to keep that bar low. I mean, listen, <laughs> if I say Hutchinson, I'm not, you know, that's going to be my drinking game for the time. Every time I butcher her last name, I have to drink. Is that, is that a fair, uh, fair trade? We, we, we good with that? Yeah. I don't I'm know good. if we need to have you drinking anymore. If you're going to fuck up even more. <laughs> I don't know. He might get better. Yeah, exactly. He usually gets better by the end <laughs> of the episode. One way to find out. There's only one by way. way. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Ashley. <laughs> it's okay. Maybe if he gets drunker, he'll actually get it right. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm saying. We, listen, we're like 14 episodes in, and I think that they're like, maybe next episode, Daniel will finally <laughs> get, get a name right. <laughs> All right, so we are so pumped up because, man, there is such an incredible library of just not only works that you've put out, but that Lost Boy Press, Lost Boys Press have put out. We have your first novella, A Map to the Stars. We have the one that just came out, The Garden of the Golden Children. We have Chimera. We have Not Meant for Each Other. And we have, I don't know, this guy, this guy, Cad, Cad Ryan, is that, is that? Cad Ryan, yeah, yeah, I think, I think that's the correct, yeah. And uh, Ghost River. (laughs) Yeah, that would be the correct pronunciation of his name. (laughs) Mm -hmm. See, now, Ashley is an editor, so I I, I trust what she says. So if I have this right, uh, Cad Ryan, we're in. (laughs) You're good. (laughs) All right, so. There is so much good stuff you guys can find in Lost Boys Press. But before we delve deeper into that, it's time to get warmed up. It's time to get a game going. Producer Sean, what do you got for us? All right. So we're going to do a little round of weird titles, which I'm sure you've seen this game floating around on Twitter or whatever social media you use. Um, super simple. I'm going to give you guys a random word, and you guys are going to basically shove it into the title of a book or a movie or whatever. To make it weird or funny or ridiculous. Um, I uh, didn't want to come up with these words myself, so naturally I went to the Google. Oh. Um, and I didn't even have to search. What I did was I just started typing in replace a word in the title with, 
And then a list of like 20 of them came up. Same. All right. I have no opinion. So Google autocomplete selected these. All right. All right. Okay. The first word is foreskin. Oh, the I'm Western ready. foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be confused with Very any nice. other... Uh, <laughs> Ashley's starting off strong. Dina, what do you got? As opposed to Southern. <laughs> yes. Oh, wait, I got one. All right. Wait, is everybody going? Are we taking turns? Yeah, that go ahead, Dina. Diary of a Wimpy Foreskin. Oh, <laughs> oh no. I don't... That's, that's quite a children's <laughs> book, I hear. <laughs> I am, I yeah. am. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Ashley, uh, how would you feel if that came across your uh, editorial door? <laughs> I would want to see it out of curiosity. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes see? Creativity at its finest, Daniel. We knew that we liked you, Ashley. <laughs> I mean, it's got a good catch. <laughs> it's got, got yeah. the hook. Diary of the Wimpy Foreskin. <laughs> well, if you liked Diary of the Wimpy Foreskin, let me tell you about the heartwarming period piece, Foreskin Gump. Oh, my God. <laughs> That was so bad. <laughs> what? That was so great, Daniel. So great. Good job, There's buddy. There's a lot of sarcasm here, and I don't appreciate any of it. <laughs> I'm sarcasm. What? I've never again? been accused like, of can sarcasm. We use the same, can we use the same? No, I have more words. Yeah, yeah, another, we got, yeah. But I got another more. Okay, never mind. Okay, you can do a bonus foreskin one. That's fine. Okay, Fifty Shades of Foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord. <laughs> Thanks for the visual. <laughs> I, I don't know if okay. I can get that out of my head right now. You can't. You won't. You'll you'll have nightmares about it tonight. He's probably going to write that book now. Yep, I'm ready. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Take <All right>. notes. <laughs> Word number two is vodka. Got it. Ashley? A thousand years of vodka. Hey! <laughs> hey! I can get on board with that. Oh, God. Mm. Ooh, got one. Wizard of Vodka. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. God. Now, I, I, I feel intimidated because I, like, I felt good about my answer before I heard theirs, and now I'm like, well, mine sucks because... Uh, we're going with the uh, the cult horror action movie Alien vs. Vodka. That's stupid. Oh, oh, D- all right. <laughs> I'm in a very angry. You know what? Mood. Listen, <laughs> Let's listen, go. Daniel. You're good at some games. Dina's good at some games. Can't win them all, buddy. Like no, we're never good at the same games, though. <laughs> we're never not. Yeah. This is... <laughs> all right. The next word is fart. Got it. Oh. Ashley, <laughs> Daniel fights a fart. <laughs> <laughs> I feel personally attacked by this one. <laughs> ah, I love Fantastic. it. Fantastic. We Fantastic. did not bring you on here to bully me, Ashley. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> I thought that was what I was here for. That's what was in <laughs> the email, the, the official <laughs> email. <laughs> it was in the agenda. Bold and highlighted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Okay. Oh, princess in the fart. Princess in the fart. <laughs> hey, I like that one. I like that one. Open for interpretation. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? I'd like to see a synopsis. I'm going, uh, going a little old school here. We're gonna go taming of the fart. Hey, not bad. Yeah. Nice. Uh, that was yeah, yeah. That I was good. I'm well read, guys. No, you just are very nice. well versed in farts. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's fair. <laughs> okay, the next word is moist. All that I think is moist toilet from the last game. I know. Isn't it funny <laughs> that that came up in autocomplete? Got it. Yeah. Um, All right, I'm ready. Of course you do, Ashley. Of I'm ready does. for it. Oh my God. The slightly moist story of Cedar B. Hartley. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That was good. Um, uh, you breathing over there, Daniel? Yeah, I'm just... Uh, moist games! 
Moist games. Moist games. Bear, 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 bear. Oh, man. All right, I had it, and then I got distracted by hers. Oh, fuck. I can give you another one. I can give you my other one. Oh, yes, give us one. All right, let's go. Uh, the moist machine. <laughs> hey! <laughs> All right, all right, I've got one. Uh, we have um, one of my favorite rom-coms of all time, starring Kira Knightley, amongst others. We have Moist Actually. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I wanted to jeer that one, but that one was that good. Was good. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Moist Actually. Okay, I've got two more. All right, let's do it. I'm loving this. This is... We're bringing this one back, man. This is this is a good one. I just don't know if anyone this can compete with Ashley right now. Like, <laughs> no, know, we right? can't. That's the I'm issue. Feeling, like, I'm feeling very intimidated at this point. <laughs> the next word is testicles. <laughs> Got it. All right, Ashley. <laughs> the whiz mob and the testicle kid. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that work so well? <laughs> Are we sure this isn't an actual? Uh... <laughs> Did you prep her? Yeah, I, I, right. I okay. I told her this is the game we were gonna play. Did you? And I said, <laughs> oh, crap. Yeah, I told her what this is the game. I didn't give her the words. I just okay, got wait. these words five minutes before <laughs> I joined the studio. I got one. I got one. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. Okay, back to the testicles. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. That's so good. That is bad. That is pretty freaking good. All right. <laughs> I can't. All right. So I'm going to go uh, literary on this one. Uh, one of my favorite books by uh, Patrick Rothfuss. Uh, Name of the Testicle. It's very, very interesting. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> that makes me okay, feel like it's one. a rumination on testicles. <laughs> <laughs> Just a, just a big. Uh, <laughs> I think, I think Ashley just made a really, really compelling pitch just now. <laughs> that, that, that's well, they, the <laughs> subtitle of the book is uh, the rumination of. <laughs> I mean, is that like the is that like the sequel to the vagina monologues? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Oh Perfect. Okay, and I'm sure this will be Dina's favorite. The last word is... Hold on, before we do this, I think we all need to go mic voice okay. for this one. So, Ashley, when you answer... You need to get very intimate and close to the mic. Oh, all gosh. Right. Close and soft. Yep, a little ASMR. Thank you, thank you, uh, Tom, for that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the last word is... Potato. Got it. Why would I like that one? Oh... Because you love potatoes. You love potatoes. <laughs> Ashley, go ahead. Oh my gosh. The way of potatoes. Oh. Boom. Boom. That's the, that, that's the next best selling cookbook right there. <laughs> it is a dream of mine to try every single possible preparation of potato before I die. So I would buy that book. Yep, yep. way of potato. Yeah. Ooh. Eat, pray, potatoes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fuck, eat, pray, vodka would have been great too. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> we, we, we dropped the ball on vodka, guys. <laughs> or I did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> All right. Well, then that means that I'm going to bring us to the uh, quintessential tearjerker potato. Or oh, sorry. Potato and me. Ooh. I liked that one. <laughs> Guaranteed to make you cry. <laughs> Peel back some layers. <laughs> All right, now that we have survived our first game segment, and Ashley hasn't left us yet, so this is incredible. This is this yeah. is a big yeah. big day for Chad us. Chad was about to leave like before he was even introduced. <laughs> All right, so, so Ashley, you've got a reading for us from your first novella. Take us through it, man. I'm ready. I'm excited to hear it. Wait, time out. Is it scary? Do I need my sword? <laughs> no, you don't need your sword. Not scary. Not scary. Chad ruined her. I don't write horror. Okay. Yeah, I don't write horror. Okay. 
So okay, don't. Good. All <laughs> right, I'm ready. Um, I'm ready. Okay, so this um, book, Map to the Stars, is literally just about my childhood. <clears throat> Um, and I changed a lot of the names except for one because I felt like he didn't deserve anonymity. Um, Amen, sister. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I wanted to just kind of separate myself from what I was writing a little bit in a way, um, because it was very, it was very difficult process writing. And a lot of it came out of, um, just random thoughts. And that's kind of how it became a book. You know, so much of it is poetry and blurbs. And then I believe there's an instance where I actually just put a whole text conversation in there. Oh, don't worry. I've got that um, highlighted. That's one of my <laughs> most interesting yeah. parts I found in your book. <clears throat> but <laughs> yeah, Sorry. that was a conversation between me and my sister that actually happened word for word wow. and that I put in the book. Um, but the piece that I'm about to read is um, part of the self, our reflections of the self. And it is inspired by a lot of things that I used to do when I was little, um, like disappearing into the woods for a while. I think I was kind of, I'm, I think I'm kind of like part of the last generation to actually, you know, be home when the street lights on, see ya kind of thing, and you run off and your parents don't know where the heck you are. Latchkey, um, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but I also had a habit of kind of sleeping in tree houses or trees whenever things got too hard at home. <clears throat> and this kind of is a story for from exactly that, those times. Um, and what I would think about and um, dream about or wish or hope for when that was going on. And let me see. Got it. I think yours was different on ebook than yeah. mine, but <clears throat> all right. Um, Dina's got her emotional support dog ready for this reading. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. If I, if he knocks on the door and I don't answer, he pees on it. So I can't, like, ignore him. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Once upon a time, a young girl named Avery fell in love with the stars. Each night, when she was certain that her mother and sister were asleep, she would quietly slip out of her bed, tiptoe through the house while listening intently for any signs of life, and then rush out of the front door of the house. Each night, the stars welcomed her. At her arrival, they shined and sparkled. For a time thereafter, the girl herself shined and sparkled. She climbed into the great oak tree that made its home right outside her bedroom window. Branch by branch, she brought herself closer to her true family. While she climbed, the heavens sent soft breezes that lovingly played with her small white cotton nightgown, which was spotted with bright green frogs. The rough bark of the great oak felt soft to the little girl's bare feet. To her, it was a more welcome, celebrated situ sensation than the silk sheets her mother purchased for her the week before, insisting they would ward her against her restless nights. Her mother could never understand. For Avery, the nights were alive with magic. When she finally reached her favorite branch, the one which cradled her spine in such a perfect way and allowed her head to rest gazing upward, she was able to see the universe. Gazing at the vastness of those small points of light, she began to feel connected to something more ancient than herself. This was a home, a home for orphan souls throughout the eons. It was calling to her soul, always calling. For a moment, she closed her eyes and listened. She heard. She heard its mysterious calls to her in all possible languages. It croaked to her in the guttural language known only to the bullfrogs. It sang to her wispy lyrics in the wind's tongue. She heard it in the quick movements of the rabbits in the nearby bushes. The little girl decided that she must finally answer. Avery opened her mouth and whispered to the heavens, my orphaned soul is yours. I wish to come and live among my true brothers and sisters. Her body felt lighter and her pain eased as her soul retreated from her body and made its escape to join its brethren. The little girl watched as it flew above her, climbing higher and higher as she always climbed her beloved great oak each night. At last, her body rested. 
She awoke the next morning in the harsh glare of the summer sun. The perfume of the night air had long faded away, and the melodious sounds of the night were replaced by the angry buzzing of bees nearby. She shifted on the branch, but the bark was no longer as soft as she remembered. It cracked and flaked under her weight, falling to the ground as earthen snowflakes. As she climbed down, an emptiness gripped her. The little girl ran into the house, afraid that her soul was lost forever. Avery had not expected to awaken in her body, but among the stars instead. She believed that her body would have shifted with her absence, eventually becoming a part of the great oak tree. She felt condemned, and everything that usually granted her smiles was suddenly failing to produce happiness within her. Even Avery's favorite foods were as ash in her mouth. She became desperate to regain her soul, or to find a way to join it in the heavens. The little girl went into her room and searched her bookshelf for any material on astronomy. She was looking for one in particular that contained star charts. When her hands finally came upon that holy text, she never let it out of her sight. It became to Avery another limb, one that was critical to her survival. The little girl felt certain that her soul had found a home somewhere between Venus and the constellation Sagittarius. Studying the charts tirelessly, she copied what she could onto a sheet of paper, knowing that by using this mapped stars, she would find her soul. Night arrived and Avery rushed out her front door to greet it, prepared for her expedition. The little girl climbed the great oak once more, bringing herself to that same branch where her soul fled from her. She pulled the folded map from the small front pocket of her nightgown and began her search. Glancing from the star map to the sky, she matched the point of lights on those, paper, those to those on the paper. She then spotted Venus at last, and then steered her gaze to the left, seeking the one that would be shining with the familiar light of her soul. The only emotion that filled her hollow shell in the past week had been her desperation. She was surviving, no longer living, crying out to either join her soul in the vast expanse of the night or to have it return to her. Without it, she was afraid of the years to come. And then suddenly, there it was. Her brilliant blue-white light shined right in the middle of Venus in the constellation Sagittarius, just as she'd expected. Avery quickly tucked the map into the pocket of her nightgown and set out to reclaim her soul. There on her favorite branch, she laid her head against the trunk once again, her eyes never straying from its light. She called out to it, commanding it to return to her body. The star never moved. Her soul refused to return, so she waited. She waited for the familiar ceremony of the night to begin. The little girl thought that maybe it was during the sacred ceremony that her soul returned just as it had left. She waited for the frogs to speak, but they were silent. She craned her neck to try to hear the song of the wind, but the air was still. She looked to the bushes and waited to hear the rabbits at play, but the bushes were as stone. Avery knew it then. She knew it. The night was the piper and it had played its music and lured away her soul to some distant land. A land so happy that her soul would never return to her keeping. She cried. She cried and cried and cried until she was certain she was set upon the earth another great flood. She did not think she could continue to live separately from her soul, to endure this utter emptiness that filled her skin since it had left her. Her tears persisted, falling upon the great bark of falling upon the bark of the great oak. The bark began to shift beneath her. It moved swiftly and came upon her skin as a swarm of locusts seeking to overcome her entirely. The earth, the darkness desired her to swallow her up and fertilize itself with her sadness. The little girl felt a moment of fear, but that moment was quickly destroyed by an onslaught of vicious apathy. She let the bark cover her and little by little, the swarm gobbled up her legs, stomach, and then her arms. As a member of the swarm reached her soaked cheek, she looked up at the star for the final time. It twinkled. A sound mixed with relief, happiness, and surprise escaped her mouth just as the bark came upon her lips. She cried out. In the bushes, the rabbits began to play. It's hard 
to come up with words after hearing that, after even after I read it the first time. I mean, that's so it's such beautiful prose. It's so raw and emotional. And it's just, man, thank you for sharing that reading with us. That was so thank good. You. Thank you. It was very good. Thank you. Oh. It was, it was very picturesque. It was very elegant. I liked it a lot. Thank oh. you. I appreciate it, man. It was I, very, uh, very difficult to write. I, I can only imagine. I mean, I it's, the whole book is just, it's an emotionally raw, just, <sighs> we're, listen, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. No spoilers now. <laughs> we're going to shift gears a little bit and we're going to get into the personal questions. We're going to peel back the layers of the proverbial potato and get all the tea of your life, <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> the layers of the potato. The uh, layers, the layers of the potato. The potato. <laughs> there are oh. layers to this potato, madam. <laughs> okay, Shrek. Let's go. <laughs> Am I supposed to ask like a potato question now? I wasn't planning on asking. This is yeah, the I potato like, interview, right? Yeah, this is. I thought yeah. all uh, the yeah. potatoes. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. Never mind. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, uh, while we're at it, Ashley, um, what's your favorite form of potato? Hmm. Don't probably mashed. Ooh. Probably just yes. mashed. Do you have any Solid special tender. fixings, anything you, you put in that mashed? Yeah. What do you put on it? Sour cream, garlic. Mm. I mean, I, I like the skins in them too, especially if yes. they're the red potatoes. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. So I never peel my potatoes for mashed. Yeah, uh, you have to get the right potatoes for it because regular Idaho potatoes are just not great when it comes to the skin. But red potatoes and fingerling potatoes, I love, yeah. I love how prepared she was for this. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Idaho, we didn't mean it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Except I'm I sorry, did. baby. <laughs> Whoa, shots fired. <laughs> um, are you in Arizona with Chad? No, I'm actually in Alabama. Oh, hey, oh, so darn it. My Arizona yeah. question is Roll out tide. now. Yeah. Roll Tide. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. That we means are that- an Auburn family here. Oh, hey. War Eagle. All right. All right. Wait, so who is that? I don't know. <laughs> listen, listen. Le- <laughs> it's it's sport, sports ball grudge match. It's okay. Yeah, sports ball. Sports, sports ball, ball grudge match. Mm-hmm. One more sports volleyball. ball comment. <laughs> you two have Cam Newton in common because Daniel Quigley is a Florida Gators fan. If he hadn't nice. stole laptops, you guys would have never had him. Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> Go Bulls. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, Seminoles, let's go. Oh, get- <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, now we actually have to fight yeah. because yeah. it's bulls or nothing. Like it. No one even knows who the gators. bulls are outside of us. All right. Fuck you, gators. <laughs> Fuck you, Seminoles. Hey, you all I'm like saying wow. is that there's articles saying the jean shorts are making a comeback. So, shorts. <laughs> That's right, the same right. thing. <laughs> Listen, too much sports talk for this writing podcast. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes it. Um, where was I going with that? Oh. What is what is whatever team she said? What state is that? Alabama. Alabama. Auburn. Oh, is it still Alabama? Auburn, Alabama. I don't know. Oh my god. I think you I think live you in still. Alabama in a week. You live in the <laughs> South. It is a know, huge SEC rivalry. They play in uh, the Iron Bowl. I don't know what the SEC is either. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Dina, Dina, I can't with you right now. You've just offended our guest. You've offended all of our southern states. Wait, we already lost, wait, Dina. Idaho. Wait, I can fix it. I can fix it. Go 49ers. Hey! 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 Did I get it? All is forgiven. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Listen. Um, well, my question. Oh, okay. <laughs> All Dina watches is minor league volleyball. Okay, she has no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> I hate volleyball. Okay. okay. Um, I have to pull up my questions again. I got so distracted. Right, you should so ask her the Arizona question, but phrase it as an Alabama question, just yes. for funsies. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Ask the Arizona question as it were Alabama. Okay. Um, it's super hot in Alabama right now. Have you baked cookies in your car yet? Hey, hey that it works. works. Yeah. It's too humid to do that in Alabama right now. Yeah. It's like 60% humidity right now. <laughs> yeah. It's not something that you can do. So it didn't work. No, you, you walk <laughs> I mean, outside and you can't breathe. It's like 
being in a hot yeah, wet it's oven. Suffocating. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's like horrible. like you should be in so a swimsuit you... everywhere you go when you're in the south because you're you're just gonna be moist the entire time. <laughs> Arr. Yeah. Ugh, okay, uh, it's weird. Um <laughs> uh, would you ever wear the same socks twice? Like in a row without washing them? It would depend on where I wore them. If I wore them somewhere dirty, then no. If I wore them in my clean house, then yes. So Are you're talking about just like dirty? Wait. wearing socks in your house without shoes? Oh, yeah. yeah I and then like, would you house. put them back on? You're well, no, socks. but like, okay, you wear socks. You wake up in the morning and like you put on a pair of socks and then you take them off like a couple hours later. Would you put them back on again? Yeah. Uh, really? Yeah. You want to wash yeah. them in between? I That's, would too. I, I would, would too. I, yeah. Yeah, Daniel would. I'm, yeah. I think I'm on the same page well, as Dina. Yeah. Daniel's gross, so. I don't think that's <laughs> what? <laughs> now, now. You gotta wash your socks, man. Now, to, to be clear, if I had walked outside in the air that it is now, I would not put them back on. Yeah, you know what? That's that's a good point. Like, because the reason I wouldn't put them back on because my feet are just sweaty, anyways. Oops. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Yep, um, yep, yep. Oh wait, so have like I my said socks, feet yet? Oh, well. You just oh, did. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> my socks are sweaty like minutes after I put them on. So no, I would never ever put them back on. But you know, if you don't have my, sweaty those, then well, wait, you're good. But my 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 feet. It's aren't enough. sweaty yeah. i just <laughs> i'm just ocd i couldn't do that um who would you want to play you in a film madeline Pesh. Ooh. wait i don't know who that is let me yeah, look let's it up. google that real quick she's on that riverdale show she's the redhead on the riverdale show mm. oh yeah. yes brilliant oh, that's a great call. i love wow. it i can yeah. see that too yeah, wow. that's a man. You are you, you are have, spot on. You for have that. a celebrity lookalike. <laughs> is there All anything right. you need to tell us about a map of the stars? Must has be it nice been optioned? Like, like <laughs> 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 that was very quick with um, that answer. Uh, yeah, well, was. yeah, I think that came from me using one of her gifts one day, and somebody being genuinely confused, thinking that was actually me. I hope you ran with it. I can. Yeah. Oh, I did. I, can see I it. totally did. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Uh, and then when on, and the, yeah, and then when Reface came out, I messed with it a little bit more. <laughs> All right, so uh from now on, we're yes. going to retitle this episode uh the one with Madeline Page. So, uh yeah, that's who you are now for the rest of this episode. That might <laughs> that might get us in trouble. Daniel, <laughs> just saying. He's going to come for us. <clears throat> um Do you are you a Star Wars fan? Oh, yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. yes. Um, yeah. P- producer Sean is swooning right now. Swooning, <laughs> I say. Um, yeah. Would you rather have dinner with Luke or Darth Vader? Hmm. Okay, so we're talking about Vader after he's actually Vader, not st- not when he's Anakin, right? Yeah. Yeah, I almost threw <sighs> in like before, after, but in, yeah. Probably Vader. I think he'd be more interesting. Right. Yeah. I mean, as long as you're yeah. on his good side, right? Yeah. You saw what happened when he tried to have dinner with Han Solo and, and company on Cloud City. It didn't go well. <laughs> we would be honored if you would join us. And listen, I won't make producer Sean do it again because I'm like kind of weird where I'm constantly like pimping him out. Be like, everyone, show, show, show him your body. But Sean has just full, beautiful sleeve Star Wars <clears> tattoos <throat> like all over his body. They're show fucking incredible. Body. And yeah, I try to get him just to take off um, Just to clarify, it's my left arm. It's not all over my body. <laughs> it's all over his body. Don't let him lie to you. But that's the I goal, place. right? To get it all over your body? I mean, obviously. You Next should just like get a tattoo so that your whole body up. looks like R two D two. Is there a Wookiee? I mean, too late for that, Dina. <laughs> I'm I have surprised. Right here. 
I'm surprised that there's not a pinup slave girl Leia on your arm. Oh, <clears throat> hold on, you say. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You no, thought to jerk it away with actually, one, Ashley. <laughs> actually, I uh, I prefer to call her Hut Slayer Leia. Hut Slayer but, you know. Leia, that's right. Yeah, yeah. We're going to PC now. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that couldn't have been more perfect. That that was the, yes, that, that was that the wasn't best. That wasn't a plant, <laughs> folks. That wasn't a plant. She had no idea. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, no. Um, my last question is, would you eat ketchup on your eggs? <laughs> Oh, gross! No. Yes. Thank you. Thank God. No. Thank you. Man, all of your you know what, that's gonna, that's, spot on. That's going to start another date. You know, there's there's a big ketchup on eggs crowd out there. Oh. So no, it was yeah. uh, it was yeah. me that started that Alabama white sauce barbecue war. On oh Twitter. yeah, that was you. you did. That you was you. Know we should have yes. known. I knew you did that. I've never yes. tried it. I want to. I love barbecue. I'm an equal opportunity barbecue. <laughs> all, right, lover, all right, hold so. on. You got to make your case for this because we're getting back. We're, we're reigniting <laughs> yeah, this war. Okay. I have never loved barbecue sauce ever. I have tried all the different kinds and it was even worse when I was pregnant with my first child. The smell of barbecue made me violently nauseous like no. so yeah i just it's not a good experience and um everybody just kept trying to get me to try a million different kinds and finally my husband was like hey why don't you try alabama white it doesn't taste anything like the brown sauce barbecue and i think you'd actually like it so he took me to saws which is the place here to go um especially if you want alabama white and i tried it and oh my god it it's delicious. It's tangy and tart and just, yeah, it's perfect. I love it. So, folks, she has made the assertion that Alabama white barbecue sauce is the greatest barbecue sauce of all time. Better than any other. And if you have feelings about this, well, we're ready to go to war for you. <sighs> all right. All right. So now it is my turn to, to dig into your books into Lost Boys. And I have so many questions. I'm going to try not to keep you here all night. But like when I started like reading these and, and compiling everything, I was like, well, I've got like 40 questions here. So, you know, um, <laughs> we're going to try to cut. We try to cover a little bit of everything. Yeah, um, I have questions too. Oh, yeah, so, ooh, no, I, I already told you about them, but you said right, that you had yeah. them covered. So I trust you. All right. That's that's a lot of pressure. So in addition to her work with Lost Boys Press, she's got two of her own novellas out. The first being A Map to the Stars. The second one just released The Garden of the Golden Children. And first, I kind of want to touch base with you on A Map to the Stars because you said it's a little bit of a, a, a fictionalized um, autobiography of, of your life growing up. And it's this really raw and just vivid and, it, and it's very different because it's not like a traditional uh literary you know storytelling you kind of switch between first person third person you you give us some poetry some uh journal entries the text message and kind of talk to me about how compiling all of this came together for you um it took quite a while and quite a through uh, a few run-throughs of trying to figure out how was the best way to go about it and what was the best order, what felt the best to me. Um, because it like, unlike garden is actually fully unedited. I left it raw grammatical errors, spelling errors, everything, because I wanted it to have a journalistic feel. I wanted it to, to present itself as if it was being written in the moment. Um, but I, um, I started writing pieces of it in a creative, uh, writing class when she would just give us just random prompts in class. And I, I would just start writing and the, my own experiences started coming out. Um, and it, it never f felt to me like it was supposed to be what, kind of what we think of when we um, think of the name, the, the, the genre of memoir, it was, it, it felt to me to try and force it to be that 
would be something inorganic and just not honoring the emotions that I had about my experiences. And it's not really fictionalized. It's the only part of it that's kind of that creative aspect is the, the piece that I read for you. Everything else that you read is just flat out my own experiences, but they are, you know, the names are changed. Um, but I, I started writing it and I thought, okay, how do I, how do I get through this? Number one. And number two, how do I get through it several times to kind of decide how it should look and what order it should be in? Um, and it, I kind of just decided to let it tell me in a way how it should flow and the things it should say. And if you, if you go back through it or if you kind of think about it, you'll see that the parts that I wrote in first person versus the parts that I wrote in third person, there's um, a difference in the rawness of the pieces. And what I wrote in third person um, tends to be those experiences for me that were too hard to talk about. So in third person, I could actually distance myself from it a little bit. And that made it sort of easier to get through. And and, and that's one thing I want to touch on, because I know you touched on it a little bit earlier. You Writing is being vulnerable, being vulnerable in a completely unique way that unless you're a writer, unless you produce anything, even if it's absolute fantasy with dragons and fireballs, even putting that out there is, you know, being naked, so to speak, for a reader. But this is so raw because it's you. And, and I can only imagine what an emotional experience it was, not only putting it down, but then publishing it and sharing it. And, and, and what was that like for you when you finally just said, I'm doing this, I'm, I'm sending this out? I was terrified. I cried a lot. And um, I still don't always feel 100% comfortable with it. It was the people around me who kept telling me, no, you need to publish this. You need to do it because you have no idea how many people who have probably experienced the same things or similar things that you have experienced would connect with this and it would resonate with them in a very real and powerful way. And that is honestly what pushed me to do it. And, and I think that was such a brave move because, I mean, listen, I can tell you, while I can't possibly understand what it's like to go through what you went through in this book, and, and normally, like, you know, I'm a bit of a meathead. I like my action movies. I like my fantasy. Like, this isn't my normal uh, type of story I read, but it it just it stuck with me. And it, and it, like you said, resonated with me. And not only is the writing so powerful, but it's just – you learn a lot about the human experience kind of with that story, I think. And one of the other things I kind of noticed when I, in a little bit in both books is that there's almost a musical quality to your writing. Uh, just in terms of it has, it, like it feels like a little bit like an orchestral, you know, you're, you're going through, uh, you know, these different lyrical forms. Like it feels like there was like a music to what you write. Is there, what, how would you say music influenced your stories? Um, I wouldn't say music directly influ influenced my story, but um, I, I mean, I've been reading and studying literature all of my life and rhythm is something that I pick up on in every story I read and everything I write. It's because to me, you know, every story has kind of a specific rhythm and a lot of I know that there are a lot of authors who don't think about it as being important, but it's so important because the right rhythm, you know, the length of your sentences, where you put your pauses affects how the rhythm is in a story. And you can use that rhythm like these short staccato like sentences to create moments of tension. And then you can use these long, you know, winding sentences to kind of create this like very mellow you know, atmosphere. Um, so it's a powerful tool to have. And I, I think about it 
it's probably one of the very first things that I think about whenever I read or write. That's amazing. And and, and I love it because like, like I said, I could feel it. And I'm, you know, again, a meathead, but even I could feel that flow and that beat to it. Um, and, and, you know, I'm going to switch over to your latest book, the book that is out now, uh, The Garden of the Golden Children. And before I ask the question, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a tiny little excerpt because I think that uh, Dina is going to get a huge kick out of this. So <laughs> she buried her face in the nape of her neck, breathing in his scent as deeply as she could and let him carry her away, all the while swearing to herself that she'd never eat butter again. God damn it. <laughs> so unintentionally, your main character is now Dina in my mind. I just want you to know. <laughs> I've been waiting Fuck for that. Butter. Yeah, Fuck butter. Dina doesn't like butter. So that's an ongoing thing like on the show. Oh, my gosh. As a southerner, that just breaks my heart. Uh, into a million butter crumbles. Listen, my family <laughs> is like from the deep south. I'm going to see family in Alabama. They in make their own butter. And <laughs> sure. Yeah. Like, it's not hard. Much. You can make it in a blender. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's See, that's, yep, that's my family. <laughs> and, oh, they don't, they don't like me because I don't like butter. But it leaves a weird film on my mouth. Yes, we've heard it before. Dina. I'd rather have dry toast. <laughs> <laughs> And dry I, toast with a sprinkle of cinnamon is really good. Oh, mm. I will do cinnamon on my toast. Ooh, and honey and like jam, but no butter. I don't like butter on it. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> you settle down, Dina. All right, so we're going to talk about <laughs> the Garden of the Golden Children. And you know, if the first book was just this raw, you know, memoir, the second one is a, a, a kind of a fairy tale setting, and and it's not a true one, but It's well known that I hate love triangles. I hate them. (laughs) I hate love triangles. But there's a love triangle in your book, and it's executed flawlessly, and I freaking loved it. Thank you. Thank Uh, you. Love triangles are winners. Can I cry a little bit? (laughs) (laughs) And and I would say that, all right, so when you were, so talk us through, Without giving away too many spoilers, because that's the hardest thing I'm trying to do is, is talk in a way where I'm not giving anything away. But it's a love triangle in your book, and it's executed pretty freaking well. Um, okay, uh, I'm trying to think of this in a way that doesn't spoil anything. <laughs> um, okay, so when I put this triangle together um i just kept thinking about how different people give us different things and bring different aspects out of us and um it doesn't always have to be romantic but sometimes it is and i to me cal very much represents exactly the person that I needed to have in my life growing up. Um, And so I I was just like, I have to write this character because this is the person that I needed. And I know that this is exactly the person that so many people need. Just that, you know, I don't, I don't care what's going on. I'm still here for you, you know, not pushing you no matter what kind of person. And, And that's, and that's perfect. All right. So I want to I want to talk I want to switch gears one more time. I want to talk a little bit about Lost Boys Press. So take us through kind of what you were doing before you started Lost Boys because I think it's really fascinating because you've been in the industry for quite a while. Since 2015. Yeah. And so you've worked for various different publishers and at some point you said I want to start my own publishing house. How did Lost Boys come about? How did this uh, desire to do your own publishing press come about? And and how did you guys get off the ground? Because I think a lot of people would want to know, like, you know, it, it's not, you know, you can't just wake up one morning and say, you know what? I'm just going to publish people's books. You know, how, take us through how this happened. Um. Well, I mean, Chad and I had been friends for a while at that point, Twitter friends, at least. Um, and we both just really had a passion for great stories. Um, Not just, you know, 
hey, we want to start a publishing house and publish just our own books. But um, I know I got into the publishing industry because I really wanted to champion books that I felt belonged out there. I haven't always gotten that opportunity, um, but the moments that I have have made everything worthwhile. I just, I kind of feel that um, anybody involved in storytelling is involved in one of the most noble professions that you can be because we've been telling each other stories as a species pretty much since the dawn of man. You know, we told each other stories by cave paintings. <laughs> but uh, so we, Chad and I talked about it and, you know, we sort of came up with this idea for, for publishing, um, for making a publishing house that we would publish those stories that we felt deserved to be told that were being ignored by the traditional publishers and that maybe didn't, you know, that walked those boundaries, you know, that's what we wanted. So does that mean that you and did you and Chad meet on Twitter? Yeah. Oh my God, Daniel, they really are us. They are. They, she oh my oh God. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> no way. You really did? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh. Yeah, I still have. How does it I think, feel to like, how I, does it feel to have to like look after a Daniel out there in the world? Oh my God. <laughs> it's a full time job. <laughs> right? I know. Oh my God. Oh. It's so much work. Oh. Yeah, I, I just, I have to it's rein constant. the Chad in all the time. Yes. Because that chattiness time. will go crazy if you just don't rein it in. Yeah. Chadiness? Yeah, all the that time. Chattiness. That chattiness. 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 Oh my chattiness. gosh. So all right, I got one more publishing question. I swear, I swear. All right. Um, what would you say is, when, when it comes down to it, what is more important to you? To publish, uh, you know, X number of titles in a year or to build a brand with just the specific titles you choose? Kind of, I guess, that the brand versus the production. I'm just, uh, I'm not even, I don't even, I'm not even comfortable saying brand. I just say the stories. To me, that's all that matters. If the story is great, then it's a story that I want to put out. Um, it doesn't really matter the formatting. It doesn't really matter the uh, the length of it. You know, I've, I've said before that if somebody came to me and told me, hey, I've got an epic fantasy and I've done it in 30,000 words. I'd be like, hell yeah, let, let me see it. I want to see it because it's got to be great if you've made it in 30,000 words. You know, I I think the stories are the, really the only thing that matters. Love it. Love that answer. And, and, and okay. so one thing that we touched on a little bit earlier before we get into the anthologies What's it like to tame the Chad Ryan? What, what, what was your experience the first time he gave you Ghost River and said, here, here are fuck squids? I said, fuck you. <laughs> 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 yes. Oh my God, yes. <sighs> well, I know our it, clip. <laughs> me with all of Daniel's ideas. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it... <laughs> I I mean, even before Ghost River, I've read his work before. So I knew that it was just going to be this absolute just, sexy, amazing thing. Just right? like <laughs> e- exactly, exactly yep. full of made up words. And I kept telling him, I, I, I kept saying, you're not Shakespeare. Let's dial it back a little bit. <laughs> You're not Shakespeare, Chad Ryan. We're going to get that on a t-shirt for him. <laughs> well, all right, all right. Give me a made-up Ooh, word. Do, do you have one that comes to mind? One from the cutting room floor, perhaps? Yep. Blood mist. That was just one word, and I was like, what That sounds like it that? could be a real word, though. Like, I get that. It sounds like that could be a Blood metal mist. band. <laughs> that sounds like it could be sounds a Jean-Claude like, Van like, Damme movie. Did something Ooh. like... Blood Sport 3, Blood Mist. (laughs) (laughs) 
Something yes. imploded, and then like, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> the blood mist. I love it. I love it. All right. All right. Let's talk about the anthologies a little bit, and then we're going to get to our off-the-wall questions. So we have Chimera. Wait, we have not up. met for each other. What? Daniel, I literally asked you to ask her one fucking question, and you couldn't even do that. Yeah, that sounds about me. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, my fuck. The name's I literally just want to – this is something that our audience would w- really want to know. Like, what does – role of editor in a small press like that what does that actually mean for you because you know you guys it's indie press so how does that work without having an agent as a middleman what is your day-to-day look like what is okay, that's so much better than love it when you take control dina i love it so you much should just <laughs> commandeer this whole interview do that's it what my husband says too <laughs> oh hey! If that's not party button time, I don't know what is. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> I just... <laughs> she doesn't know how to respond. Okay. Well, I was trying to respectfully wait until Daniel's performance was over. Oh, to that's begin. fair. <laughs> yes, oh, my that's wife, it's usually pretty quick. We don't... <laughs> oh, my God. Ow! <laughs> Sorry, continue. We're going to have to Damn it. add Daniel mentioning how he disappoints his wife on the daily to the drinking list. Yeah. Why is that not a t-shirt? Poor woman. Hey, hey. you know what? Oh. I could make a t-shirt out this of it. This could happen. Let's get it. I just I just realized that everybody just saw my elbow, and I don't like that. Okay, go ahead. Continue. <laughs> All right, so we're off the rails. So tell us what it's like so to date a day-to-day. Can Ashley just editor. please answer the question? Absolutely. Um, day-to-day changes. It's it's a constant flux because you're always at different points with different projects. And I also have freelance projects too um, that I'm doing on the side. Okay. But um, uh, as editor in chief, it's basically you know a lot of decision making. Um, we split a lot of the tasks, but editorial is very heavily mine. So I read the submissions. I make the choices. I edit all the pieces, liaise with all of the contributors. And, you know, that that's totally in my realm. Um, and so does that mean that like, um, like, so I don't know how it works with Indy. I'm, Mm, as previously stated on other episodes, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so for tradition, like those of us that are, produ- are pursuing traditional publishing or whatever, we submit qu- queries to agents and we have like our synopsis and blah, blah. So basically all of that goes to you. And then you have to do all of that work and then decide if your press wants to represent this, whatever it is. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when we, we have not opened for gen submissions and we're still mm-hmm. trying to figure out when that's going to happen or if we're actually going to do, um, of a more targeted acquisitions process, because mm-hmm. that to me seems to make more sense for a small press. Um, especially yeah. when there's just me editing all the work. Uh, I don't want to open right. my inbox one day and just see, a massive flood of yeah. submissions that I will never get through. Um, so yeah. I think that we'll do targeted acquisitions. And, I, you know, when that comes to it, I would never, um, I would never refuse, you know, someone who was going through an agent because I, I honestly feel like, you know, a person who has an agent, mm-hmm. they're hiring someone to act in their best interest. So, you know, I automatically know that in dealing with this person, it's going to be very professional. They're going to be very interested in just, you know, seeing contracts up front and, you know, taking care of their author, which is great. But, you know, we'll also take you know, a manuscripts without throughout, not just through a uh, agent, you know. So do agents also submit to indie presses? Is that what that means? I didn't know that. Or am I, I misunderstanding? Think they, I mean, I'm sure that they can. I'm, I've am i not mm-hmm. ever seen um, an instance where they couldn't. I think it just really depends on the 
publisher, but honestly, I don't know if I have ever heard of a publisher that wouldn't accept a, a manuscript through an agent. I feel like that's kind of par for the course in publishing. That's actually, I mean, that's, that, that's fascinating. And these are great questions. And I'm glad Dina took in and took control. So, I'm not oh, done yet, no, sir. Oh, madam, please continue. So then my next, my next, my next question is, um, so we've had like monsters and heartache and all that stuff. What's going to be next for like anthologies for you guys? You're welcome. Dina. Um, well, I think the watchword for the next one will be epic. Um, and we're going to widen it to 12 stories as opposed to 10. Um, that way we give, you know, a couple more authors a chance to be in it. And that's going to be the standard going forward is that it's going to be 12. Um, I guess we're just planning to move to two anthologies a year. A um, but it will mainly be about heroes. <gasps> Love it. Daniel's you know what? As long so as the cover art right style now. is the same, <laughs> I'm okay I, with it. I'm the guy that needs the matching DVD covers and the matching <laughs> books, like if they're in a series. So please just keep it consistent. So you I'll have keep it all. It. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, it will be it will be the first uh, anthology of next year, uh, and it's going to have you know totally the covers will be totally redesigned and everything. Oh, so. Okay. They're, okay. they're, they're made to go together, and we're actually talking about special editions where we will put both anthologies of the year, of each year, together into, like, a special hardbound edition. Nice. Man, that's awesome. I'm excited. So, roughly speaking, we won't hold okay, you to the I'm date. Done. Won't hold you to the date. But roughly speaking, when would you like to put this next one out? In March. Ooh. All right. Yeah. Um, and submissions questions. will open for it in August. All right. All right. Jar Jar Binks love story. Here we come. There you go. Mm. Please don't clog her <laughs> inbox with that dreck. <laughs> that dreck. Or. 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 Mulan in a gundam space war. <gasps> I had no idea oh, I wanted that God, until today, but attack. that's all I want now. <laughs> Does yeah, my, that needs to have, happen. Do we have giant robot Mushu? Oh, I think that should oh, happen. Oh, my fuck. All right, oh well, I'm, um, yeah, fuck. All right, I'm in. I'm already, can, yeah, can I pre-order can call it now. Yeah, like, that's we? it. <laughs> this is it. This is all. Shit. This is the moment. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Oh my. By the way, watch out tomorrow, Ashley. That might be Daniel's writing tip of the day. Yeah, that's 100% <laughs> going to be my writing tip of the day tomorrow. So, uh. <laughs> If you're going to write something epic, write Mulan, <laughs> Mulan. in a Gundam as Space War. <laughs> I love it. I lo I'm 100% I'm going to do this. You're going to get tagged. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. So talk to us just briefly about the anthology that did just come out, Not Meant for Each Other, along with Chimera. You had some incredible authors. What was it like having to sort through and pick out the 12? And why is Jess your favorite? Because we love Jess. <laughs> 10. It was so Just the best. painful. Just the best. It was so okay. painful. It was so painful because I, you know, we got well over a hundred submissions for it. And oh. yeah, I had, I had to, oh, you know, painstakingly know. read every single one. And I, uh, being the OCD person that I am have like file folders for everything. So as I would kind of winnow them down, I would move them to like separate folders. And then I realized when I went into my accepted, I had like 23 accepted ones. <laughs> and oh, I was no. like, well, oh, I'm going to no. have to read these again. That's and hard. Start to decide. I, I thought I would cry, but I made it through. I, I just, it was so painful. I hate, hate having to send rejection letters. It's probably the worst part of the job. <laughs> Hey, at least you do. Yeah, at least exactly. you're not just ghosting say. these people. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, know. And I, I, I was going to say, I would love to do that, but I, I wouldn't. <laughs> uh, and I, I wish too <sighs> that hard. I could have, you know, given some like specific response to everybody, but I was just, it was over a hundred submissions. So I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to like type an individual response to everybody. So I just had to like, 
Oh, this sucks, but generic, generic, <laughs> generic. <laughs> kind of. Well, don't worry. When I when yeah. I yeah. when I submit to the next one, I want you to be as generic as possible. Don't even use my name. Just be like, "Hey, author, your book." Dear author. <laughs> yeah, dear author. <laughs> that, I that, hate that those letters make... so <laughs> listen, much. <laughs> listen, author is 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 a little Terrible. too high a title for you, Daniel. <laughs> hey, person I... who banged on a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I, I've been, uh, those, those letters really do suck. Like I've been lucky and I haven't gotten too many of those for curious, but oh my God, when you get the dear author and they <laughs> I've literally had insert title. So bad. I was like, thank God I haven't gotten too many. Like, I, I think I've only got two or three of those, but like dear author insert title here doesn't <laughs> I was like oh no well I get you're I, busy but damn I mean listen yeah. Gina, it sounds to me like you should have done a better title yeah. than insert title yeah that's gonna be my next title <laughs> the insert title it should be well, yeah there we go I got it and then it should just be yeah. nothing but a bitter diatribe on your friendship with Daniel I'm writing you today yes. <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> yeah, you know, do you know about whole, my co-host? Yeah, I can make a book out of that. It's <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So yeah. let's. It's time. It's time to get to the off the wall questions. Dina, you go first. What do we got? And it's on the show uh, sheet. Don't you dare tell me first? I didn't know that I was. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. <clears throat> you have to replace Chad with a character from Sesame Street. <gasps> For a week, who is it going to be? <laughs> I didn't have that question. I love this question. Oh, so happy. oh my gosh! <laughs> Are we just going to talk about Sesame Street every week? Yeah, is that so a thing that our show yeah. is basically? Hey Shannon, you know how's what? it going? Okay, <laughs> no, sorry. I mean, oh, I well, want to say one, but there's so many like aspects to chad it's like which do you pick to focus on um i, I, like I would Chad's say kind of a honest, big bird. oh no it's combined no? he's a burton ernie he's burton he's both. Oh, oh, yeah, he's both. i almost said burton ernie. i like that i like you know what? that's great that's good i like that <laughs> all right all right so here's my question and this is a deep diving one this will be one you're gonna have to get are you ready for it Mentally, emotionally. Hey. All right. You have to re- replace Cal from your latest book with Jar Jar Binks. How does that change your story? It immediately tanks because Jar Jar sucks and literally everything. <laughs> oh, good. That's fighting Thank words you, right you. there. <laughs> Shot. Fired. <laughs> Are you telling me that you like Jar Jar? Best character ever. It's his He favorite. likes him ironically, <sighs> and he tries to pretend like it's not ironic. He, okay, oh hold God. up, hold up, hold up. This motherfucker baited my book, <sighs> one of them, and he literally <laughs> rewrote Jar Jar? entire fucking paragraphs <laughs> as Jar Jar. Entire <laughs> paragraphs. I, I opened up my beta. There it is. There's a whole fucking paragraph rewritten as Jar Jar Binks. That is a tradition. This motherfucker doesn't like it ironically. Yeah, it listen. Is, uh, he does. Any book that I beta, um, just like that's, Umbop, that's my. It's l- all. <laughs> <laughs> I love Umbop unironically. He likes it for the reaction. I love that. Okay, I know every. Does. I know every word to that song. But no, every book that I beta, that is my my gift at the end of betaing is that I take a um, scene or a sentence, especially a powerful one, and replace the character with Jar Jar Binks. It so if you ever want to book baited by me, audience. <laughs> You're going to have so much work. No, nobody submit to him because he, <laughs> he's got too much work. Thank you. I really do. That is much. that is some kind of special evil superpower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Right? It's <laughs> he would be the new villain in a Hot Fuzz-esque movie <laughs> in publishing. Yes. Just... <laughs> Editing out entire paragraphs of books and replacing it yeah. with Jar Jar. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is the greatest compliment I've ever gotten. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. All right. It's time to move forward. It's time to move on. 
are we going to do cringy copulation? Or are we going to do her story oh time? Oh, Ashley, are you going to tell us a story about the time you were taken to Travis Tritt's house at 3 a.m.? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know yes. that. Yes. yes. All right, hold on, hold on. I got to set this up. Got to set this up, okay? Ready? It's story time with Ashley. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Daniel knows from reading my book that my mother is a character, to say the least. Um, she listened to nothing but country music when I was growing up, so I have you know, nothing but childhood country music experiences. Um, and she was absolutely obsessed with Travis Tritt, thought re just legitimately he was her soulmate. So she found out where he lived. And at the time, I think he had a, ha he had a house in Georgia. And so I was eight. My sister was six. She woke us up like two something in the morning and she had her friend with her who was much younger than herself and they said come on let's get in the car we've got somewhere to go and it's not abnormal for my mother to have woken us up at like three two in the morning all the time wow this is not an abnormal thing <laughs> yeah not an abnormal thing and we pile into the car she drives us out to what feels like the middle of a no, the, of nowhere until we come to this like large estate with these huge like brick fence just all around it. it it's like legit. There's like an iron gate, everything. And oh my God, she gets out of the car. We still haven't been explained, like been told why we're there. So me and my sister are in the back seat, just not understanding at all where we are or why we're here. And she gets out with her friend and she says, shit, we're here. Where's the dog? <laughs> what do you guys have to do with the dog what? at Travis Tritt's house? What? <laughs> yeah, we, we were right? just like, wait, wait, what? what? What about a dog? And so I finally like, I get out of the car and I ask my mom what's going on. And she said, well, we're here because there's there's a dog over there and I want to get him because if I get him, I can say that I found him and put found posters and I can meet Travis Tritt. And so I freaked out because I was like, we're at Travis Tritt's house. <laughs> there's got to be security or something somewhere. Any minute, we're uh -huh. going to get caught. Yeah, and And I'm just thinking it's... It's now three in the morning. It's way too early for this. And her and her friend are standing at the gate trying to call this dog as if it's probably outside wandering around at three in the morning. <laughs> How do they even know the dog's name? That's not common knowledge. My mother is nothing if not determined when it comes to someone that oh she Oh my God, likes. it's going to be me as a I mean, mom. It was probably in a song, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It could have been. It could have been. And, um, yeah, they, they keep going for about an hour, you know, walking along the fence, like the, the, or this wall, sorry, the brick wall. They keep walking along, trying to call it from, like, different places. And eventually we hear something, like, on the other side of the fence, but it doesn't sound like an animal. It sounds like we're about to get in trouble. Oh, no. And so... My mother's Wait, like, whoa, hold up, hold up, back up. Explain the noise. Like, it sounds like you're about to get. Like, what does that sound like? Can you? It make sounds like sound somebody effects? running. It sounds like somebody running. Oh no! Like running towards the fence. <laughs> See, yeah, it sounds like somebody running towards okay. the fence. And we don't know if there is security, so it could very well be. But I don't see any lights or anything. I just hear a running noise, and then I hear, "Shit! Get in the car. We've got to go." <laughs> <laughs> That's my. That's yeah, my I jump one. in the back seat. My sister, who has never left the car, 
just she just stares at me like, "Are we going home now?" I'm like, "Yeah, we're going home." <laughs> <laughs> And my mother, oh she my just God. sprints to the car. Her friend, like, gets in after my mother has already started the car, and they just speed off. It never happens for my mother, and she's, she spent years after that trying to figure out how to get this dog and never got this dog. And then she even said, well, what about Alan Jackson? You know where he lives? Let's see. <laughs> She's like, the plan is full. Let's just go down the list. We just need to execute the plan. <laughs> Where does Garth Brooks live? Come on. I, yeah. <laughs> it's it's all of those. I mean, I she probably would have gone on forever. Who knows? But who lets their dogs out at three in the morning roam or like let them run around on their property? Like, like I my could, dogs are in bed. Oh like I could God. picture this as like an Arrested Development Rock episode. Like, <laughs> I was totally mm-hmm. thinking that. <laughs> I was thinking about that too. I don't even know why. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> or or an office episode. Yes, I can totally yes. see Michael Scott oh, doing yeah. that. No, no, me Travis. We're gonna be best friends. This is this is how That's we do it, Dwight. <laughs> oh my god! That's why I really. Oh my god! And, and I want you to know, I took a quick Beautiful. second. I took a quick second to Google Travis Tritt's dog's names. I, I found four pictures of his dogs. The names aren't <laughs> anywhere. So again, even with the power of the internet, this is this woman. <laughs> Even with the oh, power yeah. of the internet, she's found out something that is not easily accessible, and this had to have been a while this ago. This was in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was born in 86, so when I was eight, what, that was 94? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So this is, like, pre-internet. <laughs> oh I am so impressed. That's crazy. I am so impressed. Oh, my Lord. Uh, yeah, she's that's the kind of chaos she's that done I live for. She's great. done some. She's done some things. Oh, All right, yeah. that's now it is time kids. for my personal favorite segment, the part that makes us all cringe: our bad romance read, cringy copulation. Hello, ladies. We literally only do this segment for Daniel. Who's, Ashley, yep. check your Twitter DMs. Sliding into the DMs. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, Ashley, give us, bring us the sultry spice as you read this passage. Don't read ahead. Read it cold, baby. Read it cold. <laughs> don't cheat. Don't cheat. Don't cheat. Do I need to say the title and the? Yep, the yes, author? please. Yep. <laughs> Intro oh, it. God. Oh. <sighs> The crimson It'll be petal. okay, I picked it, it's fine. The Crimson <laughs> Petal. The Crimson Petal in the White by Michael Michelle Faber. Oh. Sugar pretending to seduce an invisible man, begging him in a voice almost hysterical with lust. Oh, you must let me stroke your balls. They're so beautiful. Like like a dog turd. <laughs> what? Like a dog turd. Yep. Got it. That's how it ends. You're welcome. Fantastic, Ashley. Fantastic. Okay. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I want to know what hysterically in lust sounds like or looks like. What is You're not even you worried about the dog know. turd thing? Hysterical yeah, not lust. Not. Like, like you're panicking, you're lusting so hard. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, Daniel! That's not what you should be focusing on. I understand Why the dog turd, but I've heard dog worse. turds. No, he's he's he. Apparently, we've learned that Daniel's balls are like dog turds, and that's just normal. For him. <laughs> wait, yeah, guys, that's exactly on? what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? You know, and you. what's funny is that I've actually heard that book title before. Oh no! Oh my! Yeah. Oh my! I, it was it was actually Leave it to the featured. editor. It was actually featured on an episode of Gilmore Girls. <gasps> Emily Gilmore is reading Wait. it. After oh my god! Richards then Dina should know this. Yeah, Dina yeah, should know, know this. Then when yeah, no, I've when, watched when, Gilmore which, Girls so many yes, times. When Richard's mom dies, and that. after she's found out all about you know that letter that Richard's mom sent yeah. to him on the day of their wedding or the night before oh, their wedding, god. and she yeah, goes crazy, knows about that. and yeah. she's just like you know sitting in the living or in the living room or the den or wherever it is and she's reading a book and mm-hmm. she's recommending it to Lorelai saying it's the crimson petal and the white it's in her book club she's been meaning to read it 
Yeah, she said it's Unbelievable. about. Oh my god! My mind god. Is right now. <laughs> so here's this the thing. This was all Ashley, very calculated. Oh my god! I don't remember anything that I watch. It's like it's a signature. I don't know why I do it, but like I watch everything multiple times, and I don't I don't retain a damn thing that I watch. I'll watch the same episode over and over again. I'll hit rewind and I'll go, oh, that's new. So <laughs> like I don't, and I just. That's I've watched gift, Gilmore man. Girls so many times, and I, I oh, I, I, I just it, it yeah, stuff just sticks in here. It just that's, goes that's out. such I an probably, incredible <laughs> recall. Yeah, I, I probably know way too much about Gilmore oh Girls God. and Golden Girls and a lot of anime. Hey. I swear to God, you You're guys, so none lucky. of this was planned. Okay, <laughs> Ashley didn't know that I had the Leia tattoo. Yep, Dina didn't know no. that Ashley knew all that shit about Gilmore Girls. Come on, and this no. is crazy. Oh, I was just going to say, um, several years ago, like before I got into the writing community and like before I found my fellow nerds, um, I got rid of all my comics except for one. So <laughs> oh. I'm really sad. Every time we have a guest, I'm just like, damn, I used to have a really good comic book collection and I got rid of it and I'm really upset yeah. about it. <sighs> I love uh, Marvels, but I, I really think uh, I, I love Marvel comics. I honestly think that overall I'm probably more of a graphic novel oh. kind of girl. Yeah. Me too. Um, yeah. I'm yeah, a graphic I, novel kind of girl too. Yeah, he is. I, listen, <laughs> I love Stephen King's Dark Tower graphic. I mean, I love the books too, but like the, the graphic novels that they did of kind of like a little bit of the prequels of off of that. Yeah. Oh man. All right. Yeah. So listen, Ashley, this has been freaking amazing. I'm so glad you came on this show. You shared with us. You read with us. You almost stole from Travis Tritt. And and folks, <laughs> <laughs> and for the folks at home, I cannot recommend enough. You check out not only Ashley's two books, A Map to the Stars, and just recently released The Garden of the Golden Children. But check out everything by Lost Boys Press. You got Chimera. You got Not Meant for Each Other. You've got Ghost River. There is so much that you can add to your collection, and they are all amazing. <sighs> Dina, how you feeling? I feel really good. You are amazing. As expected, Dina's gut was right. Trust Dina's gut. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Now, now, just to be clear, True she's story. talking about Ashley, not me. She would never compliment me like this. So, yeah. <laughs> no. My oh, gut really? said to run away from you. So yeah, that's fair. That's yeah, that's fair. So all right, guys, it is time for us to sign off. Ashley, where can the folks find you and Lost Boys Press? Uh, you can find Lost Boys on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Um, easiest to find us through our Beacons page. We do have a Beacons page um, and LostBoysPress.com. You can pretty much find all the information on there too. Her. Okay, hold on though. Yeah. Wow. At Ashley Editorial on Twitter. Yes, Ashley Editorial on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's where you can send her all yeah. of your Jar Jar fanfic because apparently she's a huge fan of it. Hashtag Jar Jar fanfic. No. No, no, no. Here's the it's thing. A, it's Woman okay. of Reason on the show. Don't do that. It's okay. Why I'll am just I the only it. person? I'll just forward it all to Daniel. Oh, you're going to you're gonna turn it right they, back around. No, to don't do that. He's going to forward it to me. I'll give you his personal email. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like I've gotten a uh, a new unofficial title that pays absolutely nothing at Lost Boys Press. I'm the official uh, submissions uh, agent for all lot for all Jar Jar fan fiction. Is that fair, Ashley? Absolutely fair. Ax- all right, I'm part of Lost Boys. I'll give team. you guys this personal I'm email. In. I'd like to uh, I'd like to be added to the Twitter page, please. <laughs> give him host. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Don't give don't him do that. that. <laughs> Except for Jar Jar fans. Don't do that. Jar Jar. That would be horrible. We don't even let or, him have our password. Thank you. Or Jar Jar Erotica. <laughs> yes, especially. Thank you. Oh, God, Thank you. No. Jar Jar erotica. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I don't want to no. Google this, but Daniel now I have to Google this. Daniel picks the worst erotica. I do pick but the best. But poorly written. <laughs> Jar Jar Erotica. Only the poorest of the poor. <laughs> Only the poorest of the poor. Exactly. <laughs> I'm stressed All right. out. No. And you guys can find me on Twitter at DanQWritesThing. DanQWritesThing because I ran out of characters and I'm not good at spelling. So DanQWritesThing, not Dank. Words are hard. Yeah, words are hard. Uh, Dina, where can it's they find dank. you? 
You can find me on Twitter at Dinosaurs D. That's Big D. Like these nuts. Hey. <laughs> and producer Sean, where can the folks find you? I'll probably be filtering through Jar Jar fanfic because. And Jar Jar Erotica. And Jar Jar Erotica. And Jar Jar Erotica. Yes. Yeah. Especially. Can't wait. Thank you, Ashley. Bye. Thank You're you, welcome. Ashley. We love you, Ashley. <laughs> Jazz hand. <laughs> And we're out. <laughs> the Don't Make It Weird podcast, hosted by Daniel Quigley and Dina Soros. Produced by me, Sean Holden. A very special thanks to Ashley Hutchison, our guest this week. Find out everything you need to know about Lost Boys Press at lostboyspress.com. Check out Ashley on Twitter at Ashley Editorial. If you're a fan of the show and you want to support us, check out our merch at store.don'tmakeitweird.net. That's store.don'tmakeitweird.net. Every cent goes right back into the show. Once again, thank you for watching or listening. We love you all. See you later, weirdos.